Welcome to the truth about artificial sweeteners. In this video, we'll explore the health implications of popular sugar substitutes, including new scientific revelations from 2023. Artificial sweeteners are marketed as modern day heroes, promising sweetness without the blood sugar spike and fat gain. But is this promise all it's cracked up to be? What about side effects? Are some sweeteners better than others? We'll explore all of this and more. Make sure to subscribe for more diabetes information and please click the like button if you find this video useful. Before we explore individual sweeteners, let's look at the latest developments. In May of 2023, the World Health Organization issued a shocking statement advising against the use of non-sugar sweeteners. This follows a mega analysis of 283 high quality studies, including randomized controlled trials, prospective cohort studies, and case control studies, which presented some concerning findings. While short term studies showed potential for weight loss with sugar substitutes, longer term studies indicate significant health risks. Notably, non-sugar sweeteners were associated with a 76% increased risk of obesity over the long term. Furthermore, the research highlighted a 23% increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes among those who consumed the most, and a 12% increase in premature death from any cause. Now, there are a few caveats to this study. First of all, it tackles sugar substitutes as a broad category rather than discussing specific options. We'll get to that in a moment. Secondly, the study also emphasized the dangers of standard table sugar focusing on reduction rather than sugar replacement. Essentially, both sugar and artificial sweeteners as a broad category are bad. So what are artificial sweeteners? Some of the popular ones you might know are aspartame, saccharin, sucralose, and stevia. The first sweetener, saccharin, was discovered by accident in 1879. A scientist named Constantin Falberg was working at his lab in Johns Hopkins University. He was researching coal tar, a thick, dark liquid used in dyes, drugs, and explosives. One night, he noticed his dinner tasted unusually sweet. Turns out, he forgot to wash his hands and had inadvertently discovered a sugar substitute that would change the world. Saccharin isn't metabolized by the body, meaning you get the sweetness without the blood sugar spike. However, in 1981, saccharin was listed as a potential carcinogen after studies on rats showed that it caused bladder cancer. Fast forward to the year 2000 and it was removed from the list of carcinogens with belief that these effects are not directly applicable to humans. Despite this, research suggests that saccharin may have serious downsides, particularly when it comes to blood sugar control. In a 2014 study published in the journal Nature, Seven healthy people consumed the maximum daily limit of saccharin, according to the FDA. Researchers monitored their blood sugar, and within just seven days, four of the seven participants started having worse blood sugar control. As a result, researchers are currently lobbying to change the regulations. With all that in mind, you might want to be wary of saccharin. Next, one of the most common artificial sweeteners is aspartame. Found in many products like diet soda, sugar-free gum, sugar-free ice cream, and light yogurt, aspartame is about 200 times sweeter than sugar. Despite controversies over its safety, regulatory agencies have deemed it safe for general consumption. That said, in June 2023, a group of 25 scientists from the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified aspartame as possibly carcinogenic. This change was due to concerns that aspartame may cause heptocellular carcinoma, a type of liver cancer. The problem here is that the International Agency for Research on Cancer doesn't have regulatory power. Their role is to conduct and disseminate research rather than setting regulations like the FDA does. In a world where regulatory change happens at a snail's pace, especially when billion dollar companies are involved, turning science into regulation can be difficult. 
Furthermore, aspartame is suspected to contribute to neurological problems, including depression, headache, and convulsions. According to a 2021 study published in the journal Nutrients, when we consume aspartame, our body breaks it down into various substances, including phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is known to disrupt important hormones like dopamine and serotonin, affecting mood, learning, and other brain functions. The seriousness of this problem is difficult to prove, largely due to ethical and practical problems with running the necessary long-term trials. Then there's the question of acceptable risk. After all, regulators allow us to consume plenty of toxic foods. Other studies show that aspartame changes the composition of gut microbiota. And of course, today we know that the gut microbiota impacts everything from digestion to nutrient absorption to immunity, brain health, and insulin sensitivity. So when it comes to aspartame, user beware. A less known sweetener hidden in so-called low sugar drinks, protein shakes, and diet products is acesulfame potassium, commonly known as ACE-K. Again, studies suggesting that ACE-K affects the gut microbiome and animal studies indicate it may cause thyroid dysfunction. Furthermore, one study found that ACE-K was the most commonly found sweetener in breast milk, meaning this chemical is passed on to newborn babies. Since 1996, the Advocacy Watchdog Center for Science in the Public Interest, or CSPI, has been lobbying the FDA to demand further testing before allowing ACE-K to be used. However, to date, this appears to have fallen on deaf ears. If you're buying sugar-free products, read the ingredient list and look out for ACE-K, acesulfame potassium, or acesulfame K. Next, erythritol is made by fermenting corn or wheat starch. Early on, erythritol was considered a low-risk sweetener. However, recent research shows cause for concern. A 2023 study looked at the health outcomes of 3,000 people over three years, finding that those who consumed the most erythritol had nearly double the risk of heart attack or stroke. Following this, laboratory scientists exposed blood platelets to erythritol in order to understand what exactly was going on, and they found that erythritol significantly increased blood clotting signals. When your blood clots more than it should, this can obstruct blood flow to your heart and brain. Thus, researchers concluded that high consumption of erythritol was associated with increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Before we get to potentially less harmful options, how about those free gifts from us? Discover an entire world of diabetes-fighting foods with our new book, 10 Incredible Foods That Reduce Blood Sugar. Plus, you'll discover the real reason why type 2 diabetes, obesity, and heart disease are increasing at an alarming rate. And find out what really works when it comes to preventing these illnesses by watching our free diabetes-fighting documentary. Plus, get a free recipe book, Amazing Alternatives to Rice, Pasta, and Bread, which contains over 50 delicious and easy-to-prepare recipes that the whole family will love. These gifts are free and waiting for you to grab them in the description box below. Now, back to our video. Moving from bad to potentially less bad, we have sucralose. Sucralose is made from real sugar, but chemically altered to replace hydrogen atoms with chlorine atoms. The result? A calorie-free sweetener that's about 600 times sweeter than sugar. Most research indicates that sucralose may be a safer option than saccharin and aspartame. That said, one study did report a potential impact on blood sugar. It's also popular for baking. However, two studies, first in 2010 and then in 2020, raised concern about cooking with sucralose. Researchers found that when sucralose is combined with fats and heated, like when you're baking a cake, it produces compounds called chloropropanols. These chloropropanol compounds are linked to cancer, kidney damage, and reproductive issues. Interestingly, the world's largest sucralose producer funded a follow-up study in 2021, concluding that sucralose is suitable and safe for its intended uses, including uses in cooked and baked goods. If nothing else, this gives a little insight into the murky and confusing world of artificial sweeteners, which is why it's important to be informed. 
Next, xylitol appears to be fairly safe. Xylitol is a naturally occurring sugar alcohol found in fruits and vegetables. It's also produced in our body in trace amounts as part of a normal metabolic process. It's generally well tolerated and doesn't have the controversy that many of the others have. It's absorbed slowly in the intestines, causing less of an insulin response compared to sugar. Xylitol is another notable advantage. It's believed to promote dental health. Unlike sugar, which feeds harmful bacteria in your mouth, xylitol actually inhibits their growth. For this reason, many chewing gums and oral care products now use xylitol. While xylitol is considered safe for most people, it can have a laxative effect in excessive quantities. And a word of warning for your furry loved ones, xylitol is toxic for dogs, so be sure to keep your chewing gum and sweetener out of reach. With all the potential issues around artificial sweeteners, what should you do? First, minimizing added sugars and sweeteners overall is best. Even natural sweeteners should be used sparingly. If you want some sweetness, using a little honey, maple syrup, or stevia are less likely to cause harm. But remember, they can still impact blood sugar, so go easy. Fruit is another good way to add sweetness naturally. A squeeze of lemon or orange in sparkling water is fantastic replacement for soda. Or try chilled hibiscus tea, a tangy treat which is rich in polyphenols and has been shown to improve blood sugar control, aid weight management, and support heart and liver health. For cakes and desserts, experiment with banana for sweetness that comes with natural antioxidants and vitamins. Gradually reducing sugar is a good option. Remember, sugar is addictive. It literally triggers the pleasure centers in your brain. If you decide to cut back, before long you'll discover natural flavors satisfy fine without sugar.